This is a video to introduce you to a type of lesson planning called backwards design. It's also known as understanding by design. And throughout your career, you're going to be exposed to a lot of different ways to develop lessons in your curriculum. And this is just one of those um, types of models that you could use. Um, it was developed by Grant Wiggins and Jay McTee in the late 1990s, and they wanted to rethink the traditional model of how folks uh, approach lesson planning. And this is caught on so well that it's also included at UH Manoa and also Chaminade. And I use this model in my own teaching. And I, and I must attest that it has changed the way I look at lesson planning. So what's, what does this consist of? Well, let's think about what a traditional teacher might do when first planning a lesson. Do you think they would come up with the lesson activities first? Or do you think they would come up with the objectives first? Or they would figure out how to assess the students and figure out how they're going to give a grade? Uh, this would be only post-assessment because we can assume that the teachers already know what level the students are at. So if you decide, if you answered, decide the activities on which the students should do, you would be correct. It turns out that teachers are very busy people and that one of the challenges is finding things for students to do in the classroom and fill the time. So they want stuff. They want stuff to be able to do in their classroom. But let's consider a typical uh, teacher story. This is true of a friend of mine, Gary, who is a high school teacher who is going to present Romeo and Juliet to his class of juniors. And so he was always struggling about ways to keep it exciting and fresh. And so a fellow teacher suggested that they, he shows the uh, video of a modern day version of Romeo and Juliet that will engage his students. So he thinks it's a great idea and he plans to show it. And he's excited because he fills up most of his week because videos take a while. So he's come up with a lesson activity. But then he notices that students are not necessarily paying attention. And then he tells them, hey, you're going to should take notes uh, because there's going to be a test on this later in the week, which he hasn't made up yet. But at the end of the week, he goes home and makes up some multiple choice questions and he now has his lesson assessment and gives him a grade. A few days after the test, the school's principal tells, visits Gary and gets a, the principal tells Gary that I got a phone call from a parent who was complaining about why you're not teaching it from the book and showing a video. And so now Gary has to pause and think why he's showing the video. And so he replies that the students will be able to relate more to the movie than just reading the, from the text, and that he, he says that the students will have a better analysis of it, much better, and so now suddenly he comes up with the lesson objective when he's forced to. Believe it or not, a lot of teachers approach their lesson planning this way. And that's fine, but what happens is you don't know why you're really doing those activities and why you're really assessing the students. So we do it backwards. And if we go down here, how we approach it, a backwards design person would first make sure they know exactly what the students should be able to do in the lesson. So they decide the lesson objectives. And this is where it gets really backwards. They Before they even come up with the activity, they figure out how best to assess those outcomes. And so we'll actually develop the assessment for it. And then finally, find a lesson instruction that fits the outcome in the assessment. And so does the lesson instruction last. Now, this might be a little tough to do and unintuitive, but once they're matched with each other, then everything that you do in the lesson is of value and important for the student to do and nothing is ever wasted. So it is a very, very powerful type of lesson planning that uh, can make sure that students are really learning in your course. So let's go ahead and examine the first step in backward design, which is how to decide your lesson objectives.